Welcome back. Let's see how we can tweak a corrective blend shape morph that has been auto-generated with the transfer utility once we've rigged our shirt from Marvelous Designer in Das Studio. Now that was a handful of a sentence, wasn't it? Say that 10 times fast. So Blender using it to correct this kink up here. Let's go. So we know what the name of it is, Body CBS Upper Arm Z90N. If you don't know how I got to that, please watch the previous episodes in this series. I'm gonna go and copy this out just so that I have it. I'm gonna go and select the Genesis figure ideally. This is kind of a two-part process. Uh, ideally, you want to have the Genesis figure as a reference in there to make the correction as well as the shirt. So it's gonna be an export process that you have to gonna make twice. I'm gonna go and use the OBJ format, file, export i'm going to go and put this on my desktop for now so this is going to be the g9 base figure resolution is not important because we're not going to import this as a morph anywhere for this to come correctly into blender let's go and switch the preset up here to modal because that is meters as units and the other thing we're going to do is make sure that the filter objects box is selected and this says selected roots and this means that only the genesis 9 figure will be exported and nothing else i'll go and hit accept and that's on my desktop now next thing i'm going to do is select my shirt which is currently base resolution unless we had added a subdivision service modifier in case that is the the case just have a look here and make sure resolution level is set to base because we do need that at base resolution same thing again file export or use your favorite shortcut key and we're going to name this whatever that morph was called so control v to paste that in here make sure obj is selected hit save and the export options should be exactly the same like before customers now just this is basically still the model one and uh, selected routes with filter objects enabled hit accept and that's that. Let's import both of these things then into Blender. Select everything, remove everything, and go under File, Import, or use your favorite shortcut key for that, like I often do. And let's bring in the base figure first. Split by object we don't want to use, and the rest of the values can stay as they are the default. So scale one and just hit Import. Full stop on the numpad to zoom in to my handsome guy who's not wearing a shirt right now. So let's don't do this as well. I've got the OBJ importer on my quick favorites option here that does the same thing as doing file import. And this one here, just make sure you select the OBJ, not the MTL file. That's my shirt here. Same thing applies. Here it is. Perfect. Also has viewport colors. How exciting. Good stuff. The easiest thing to fix something like this in Blender would be with the sculpting tools. And they do take a little bit of getting used to, but they are pretty cool. And I do like them. I can't really say which ones I prefer more, the Blender ones or the ZBrush ones. I, I like them equally and uh, I, I just really can't make up my mind. What I like about ZBrush is that it's just a one-click operation back and forth, so you're more efficient when you're working with Das Studio this way. But it is perfectly possible to do this in Blender as well. And we do this by selecting the shirt first, and not the Genesis figure, make sure the shirt is selected, switch from object mode into sculpt mode, and then here we have this massive brush menu on the side here. And if you drag that out, it'll show you what all these icons mean. I'm not really an icon person, so I do like to read stuff uh, in addition to icons. And the brush we're dealing with is the smooth brush. It's the same as in ZBrush. If you hold down Shift, it'll switch to the smooth brush. Not that you'd actually see this unless you look at this very bottom line here, you see some of the options change. So it's just about possible to see that there. But if you switch over to the smooth brush, you can actually make a change here. So the default is set to 0.7 in the strength. And if you use that, you'll see that everything just goes and melts away. So that's really, that's too aggressive. So control Z to undo that. Um, you can go and set that to something lower. I would say something like, you know, 0 0.2, 2, 0.1, something like that, much like what we had in ZBrush. Square brackets again makes this a little bit bigger, and that is better. It's still a little aggressive, but I think it's going to be enough to make our change here. I might, I might set it down to even something like 0. 0. 0.1. Let's go, let's go do that. Smooth out the back a little bit. Smooth out the beyond, the back and the beyond, and that's 
that's kind of nice. Once again, to make that change at the top here, we can either use more sculpting tools or you can also go and make that change in edit mode. So don't be afraid to switch between different tools in Blender to get the job done. Like in this case, the top, I think that worked quite well with what we had in Hexagon with the smooth selection. Let's use that switch over from sculpt mode into edit mode, select faces up here, and then go and see if we can select a few of those. So just maybe, maybe just the, you know, from here to there with shift in the middle. Let's do that. Let's go and select these four faces here. And uh, if you wanted to go and bring this down, you can either go and choose the move gizmo here and then go and make that move yourself like that. Or you can go and this is what I would recommend. You switch over to this option here, which are the proportional editing tools. They need to be enabled here. And then you can pick connected only, pick a curve of how you want to make that change. Also the manipulator that's currently on world position or global as Blender calls and you can go and switch that over to local or you can switch it over to normal and then it'll follow more what your where your faces are pointing at here. I think this is going to work. If I go and just move that down, oh, there we go. The area of influence is a little bit large. So uh, that's something that is just, that's a little tricky to do in Blender. I used to, I usually press G and then if you look closely, there's that circle that like at the bottom here, if you see that, there's that circle that's that's here. If you if I go and scroll my mouse wheel down now, up and down, you can see that the circle changes and that's now the area of influence that is around my vertices. So make an appropriate change, something like that, maybe a little larger like like so and then make a change as you see fit so in my case i'm thinking i can now now that the circle is uh, in position i can go and use the little arrow to make that change i prefer really to use the shortcut keys for that so i would go and look at the front of this and then go and press g and then just go and move this slightly so maybe to something like this i'm just looking at the top here and see if that is at the top of his arm and then the rest i would go back into sculpting tools and and do the rest so i'd go and just sculpt that out in fact let's do that so from edit mode we switch back to sculpting mode and then i'm not going to use the smooth brush i'm going to use the regular draw brush and just see the strength is 0.5 by default so maybe like point, point 0.1 something like that and just left click and drag over that just gently and then you see how that comes back out and now that's a it's kind of the the cloth formation that I'm that I was hoping to see. Now you can go and do the same on the bottom. You can go and make the make the bottom here flare out a little bit or hang down. Again, that's something I would do with vertex tools. But that's kind of cool to do the, the combination of these two things and that's what makes Blender such a powerful application. Once again putting this in a little bit also possible with the vertex tools. So I would do that like this from the front. G, I'm just go and grab that into kind of here, maybe something like that. And then once again, that's a job for the sculpting tools here. This can maybe, this here that can maybe come out. One on the numpad to look at it from directly from the front. If you look at them like this and you use the shortcut keys, that might not have the effect that you want. So I prefer to do this from the orthographic views. Go with G, maybe that flares a little bit like so. And maybe that, that should also then flare a little bit more like, like that. I don't know, something like that. That looks pretty cool to me. Do we need to make any other sculpting changes here? Oh yeah, that, we need to go and do that. So switch back over, sculpt mode, sculpt that out with the normal draw brush. Smooth this out a little bit. Bob's your uncle, Betty is your aunt. Okay, that is our shirt fixed. Now comes the point where we're going to go and import this again into Dash Studio. So I'll go back into object mode with my shirt still selected. I'll head over to File, Export, OBJ. And then here, because it's still on the desktop, I can actually now overwrite the previous one that I've had here only because that still has that same name. All I need to make sure is that it's the selected object only and the scale and everything else can be exactly as it is right now. So one is fine and I'll go and export this now out. 
Now notice that Blender will use meters as units. If we go open the end panel, you can see the size of my shirt here. And this is now the correct size. Because I've exported it with the scale of one from Blender, I need to tell Das Studio when I import this morph that this needs to be that same scale. So it's not Das Studio scale, which is centimeters. This has to also be the modo scale or the meter scale or the Blender scale, whatever you want to call it. So in order to import this here, let's go and head over to Edit Object with the shirt selected, Morph Loader Pro. And then over here, I'm going to go and select Modo already at the top here. This is where you need to do that. So if it's saying Das Studio, don't do that. Your shirt will come in with the wrong size and uh, click Modo here because that's what we've used for exporting and for Blender. So now it needs to say the same. Choose Morph File. This is where we're going to go and pick the morph we've overwritten, which has this weird name here. And because we've already got it in here, it'll be called that as we import it. So open this up here. Then here you can see that is the name. Perfect. That's exactly what we want. All we want to change here is that we want to reverse the deformations. So right click into this and change it to yes. And overwrite existing, you can change that to deltas only. You can also go and save yourself a preset from here. If you use this a lot, hit accept. And lo and behold, our change should be populated into here as it overrides the existing morph. And that's how we go and change a corrective blend shape or a joint corrective morph with Blender. There you go. That's three different ways of fixing these things with three different apps. Pick the one that works best for you. And I hope I'll see you in the next episode. Take care.